The most common uses of the imputation bond are often grandparents wanting to leave money for grandchildren. Uh, in terms of dollar amounts, we have an awful lot of money that's been used for uh, people wanting to reduce their aged care costs or increase their pension benefits, which is interesting because a lot of people on pension um, would be on tax rates well below 30%. However, sometimes the, the advantages of using a bond in certain circumstances uh, can really help and they can actually access more money despite paying a little bit more tax on their earnings. There are a number of high net worth people using bonds because of the, obviously clearly the tax advantages from that point of view. Estate planning is a major part of our uh, portfolio of bonds. We have a lot of people use them because they want to uh, uh, be certain where the money is going. Uh, insurance bonds are also tax free uh, upon death of the life insured and they are called an insurance bond and as such there is a life insured. From an education funding point of view, insurance bonds do have uh, good advantages in so much as you can save money and make withdrawals from it when it's tax advantageous to do so. The great advantage of it is um, along the way if they need money for other things um, they've got full access to the, to the cash and in under the 10 year period they've got full access to the 30% tax offset as well. One of the great uh, things that's coming out in the industry these days is people are talking about laying, layering income for uh, people in retirement and by that we mean having different sources of income. Obviously one source is the age pension for a lot of people, uh, but then they may have some superannuation, you have an account-based pension paying an income stream from that. And then you could structure an income stream from an insurance bond, and that can be uh, very useful and often mimic what's happening with your account-based pension so much as you can choose the underlying investments. Um, the great thing about it is that the majority of your withdrawal from there would be return of capital. It can uh, be very flexible because you can stop, start, no minimums, no maximums, have as much as you want, as little as you want. It can take further contributions so you can put more money into it if you're not spending everything you're getting out of your other income streams. So what we're talking about here is layering that perhaps with an account-based pension and an annuity so you have three or maybe four um, streams of income. The other great thing about it is, is um, insurance bond income stream or insurance bond can work very well with Centrelink. Centrelink uh, deem assets for income, they have a deeming system. An insurance bond on its own is uh, just like any other financial asset. It's deemed for income and it's an asset. If you place an insurance bond inside a trust, Centrelink must assess a trust on assessable or taxable income. The insurance bonds do not generate taxable income. So therefore, if you place the insurance bond inside the trust, no income can be applied to that asset. It will still be asset tested, but not income tested. You can then basically draw an income stream from the bond out of the trust, and only a small amount of that income would be assessable by Centrelink rather than have the whole amount deemed. So it can be quite income friendly from Centrelink's point of view.